We are here at the University of Dayton Arena for Division Four State Semifinal Wrap Up between Crestview and Highland. Welcome everyone to our coverage being brought to you by Van Wert Vision, uh, sponsoring the highlights of what you are about to see as we break it down the Crestview victory that happened here just a little while ago. Patrick Handler, Mark Schein here with you. Crestview taking on Highland. And, of course, by the time you get to this portion of the season, everybody's good. By the time you get to UD Arena, everybody's good. Everybody's good. We had a great high school basketball game today. Crestview played extremely well in the third quarter and got a big lead. We'll bring you the highlights in this one against a Highland team that had won 11 in a row heading into this one. They caught fire at the very end of the season. Crestview, of course, stumbling a little bit at the end of the regular season, but able to turn it on as we bring you the highlights in this one. And it was a, a little bit of a rough start for Crestview early on. You see the starting lineups getting pushed <laughs> pushed around. Ren Sheets, he'd get fired up. We'll hear uh, from more him in just a second. Ball control issues early, but Crestview uh, turning it around here. Gavin Etzler with the basket. A lot of offensive rebounding helped keep them in this one early. She's played really, really well. I thought early on Crestview was very, very nervous. I thought they had a lot of turnovers early on that we don't expect them to do, but she's had some good plays and some good dimes dropped to him. Sheets with the hoop and the harm. Free throws also keeping Crestview in. Eight of nine free th uh, from the charity stripe here in the early going. Then this basket, Sheets going to work. He gets two more there. Now we're going to see Etzler. Gavin Etzler gets it down low right there. Nice passing, soft fade up and counts. Knights 14 of their 27 points in the first half in the paint. They did a really good job of defending Gavin. He was able to get loose that time. Here's some more board action inside a kick out for a three. Jarrett Harding with the bucket. I'm sorry, that's Mitch Temple. Temple with the downtown offering. And then Nate Lickley on the miss. Lickley struggling tonight, only three points, but able to hustle, get the offensive rebound. And you see him crashing the boards. Jarrett Harding eventually coming down with the bucket. He's been a good sixth, seventh man for them throughout the last part of the season. Now Hunter on the give and go. Nice double clutch there to end the half. They kept this one close. Highland was game, and then the second half, it was like a brand new Crestview team. Well, it really was. If you look at the numbers, they have eight possessions at the end of the quarter and scored 22 points and just blew it open at the end of the third quarter. Lickley hit his only three, giving a Crestview a four-point lead. Was their largest lead of the night at that point. Then after a Highland bucket, Temple taking it to the hoop, laying it up and in, making it 34 to 32. Later is Hunter driving, scoring, picking up the foul, 40 to 32. Crestview starting to pull away. They really are. They're going to get it. A play coming up, their eighth possession of the quarter will actually be a five-point play as they get a couple of free throws off a of technical and then a three-point play like that one right there. Temple gets the and one, making it a 13-point lead for Crestview, and then they keep it going. Sheets with the inbounds bucket, getting that one to go. And then how about more Ren Sheets getting the offensive put back, making it 50 to 35, 26 to 7 run in the third quarter by Crestview. You gotta remind me that he's a sophomore. He just seems to play better every single time I see Ren Sheets on the court. Mitch Temple with the exclamation point, putting them up by 18 points, and they get the win. Crestview with the 69-63 win. Temple 25 points, 15 to 17 free throws. They did a tremendous job in here as Crestview moves on to the Division IV State Championship game as we hear now from winning coach Doug Etzler. Pressuring us and extending our offense out a little bit further than what we like. And then offensively, they did a great job of getting downhill and getting to the basket. I thought they attacked us. And those were the two main things we talked about at halftime as adjustments on offense. We got to be the aggressive team. We got to get downhill. If they're going to play that, that tight and push us out there, our guards got to be good enough to get to the basket. See if we can draw some help. They did a great job, I thought, of really locking in on Nate and Gavin on the wings, which didn't allow a lot of help. And the help, it, when it came, it came from Ren's guy. Mitch either finished or got the ball to Ren for an easy shot. And that, I thought offensively that was the bigger, biggest difference in the second half. And then defensively, we just tried to make them use their left hand a little bit better. Everything they did was to the right in the first half. And, you know, it, it worked, but, you know, it's not always going to work. But tonight, just little adjustments like that got it done. Questions? Coach, what was the message at that time? Because you guys came out a, a totally different team in that third quarter. Just aggressive. We talked, you know, you, you were 16 minutes away from playing from a trophy and we're one point down. It's almost an even game. And we didn't feel that we played like we were capable of playing, especially at the offensive end. Just play downhill. Make sure we, if we go down, let's go down swinging by attacking the basket and making them stop us like, like they did us in the first half. But be very aggressive. We, if we get beat, be, be, get beat being aggressive. Coach, is that how you play every game or did you see something in the highest defense where you're like, 
we want to really focus on attacking. It's a lot of depending on how they defend our shooters on the perimeter. If they help off our shooters, we're going to kick that. And this is going to do a great job. Carson's going to do a great job of finding our shooters. And when they don't help, those guys are going to get to the rim. So tonight, they didn't help off. And it's one on one to the basket. You, you got to go make a play for us. Coach, did you feel like that fourth quarter, did you guys kind of let up a little bit, and that's why they were able to make that run at the end? It was kind of, you guys got that big lead and started to feel comfortable? It, it, it's human nature to do that, but I think it's because Highland doesn't quit. And those guys, I mean, they were down 13 in the fourth quarter in the regional finals, and they just kept attacking and kept playing. And we knew they were going to. I thought defensively, we could have done a little bit better, but they were taking it right at us. I mean, they were getting downhill, and we either fouled them or they got to the rim and scored. So they kind of got completely out of what they did offensively and just said, we're going to put our head down, too, and, and they did a great job of getting to the basket. I think maybe a little both. I'm going to give Hyde the credit. They didn't, they didn't play. Guys, how much did that energy change there for you guys after the technical foul and the two-handed Yeah, I mean, like, once we got it going, that really helped. I mean, it brought up the energy levels. I mean, the crowd was getting into it, and that, I feel like that just kind of fueled us. Did you, did you get, was there a different feel in the first half or the, from the second? Like, did you come out not feeling like you had that energy? Did you just talk about how big energy in that third quarter? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the start, we were a little, like, nervous, you know, nervous getting into it. Then once we got into the flow, I mean, we were just, we had it going. It was hard to stop us at that time. Yeah, like, like Mitch said, once we got going, like, after halftime, after we talked in the locker room, it's just basically another game for us at that point. We just zone everything out and focus on the second half of the game. The presumption is your players from Heights. Uh, what do you say about just the opportunity you have in front of you, no matter who it is? You know, we talked about it after getting here is, you know, for some teams, getting here is your, your goal, your ultimate. You got to the Final Four. We talked about playing for a trophy. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I know Bruce is going to come prepared. They're going to play them. They, I mean, I, they're going to have to beat Rushi. They're going to come come to play. I, I just know the opponents that they play every night too. And right now we're, we're in the championship game, and I, I'm, we haven't looked that far I'll be honest. We win one game at a time, and I haven't watched film on either of them yet. So we're going to stick around and watch this game and see if we can come up with a game plan tonight. Get a, get a brief practice in tomorrow, and we're, we're just happy to be in that championship game. We want to play for a trophy this weekend. But it doesn't feel to you knowing that you led your alma mater to the state title game. You know, it's special. Yeah. Didn't think I'd ever have an opportunity to come back home. Coach Best, what he did for Crestview in the years he was there, he won two state titles, was a runner up his first year here. And, you know, he, he's going to stay as long as he wants to stay. And when the job opened up, it was, you know, is it the right move for my family? Is it a time when my son's going to be a freshman, my daughter's in her junior year, and is, is it the right move? But, to not come home, it was pretty hard to not to not do that and pull the trigger just because of the tradition we have, uh, having a chance to coach in the gym my father's named after. I mean, it, just a lot of special things at Crestview, and it, it, it's special having a chance to play for a title there when in the school I played at. Uh, you know, when we when we made the move, obviously we still had Kalen, so he, yeah, we he thought, hey, I'm gonna follow in the footsteps of my. My two cousins that just won a state title, but I don't think anybody realizes how hard it is from our area to get here. You know, we, we played a great Double St. John's team, a great Ottaville team, a great Marion local team in the regional finals. It's, it, it's so hard to get here. So yeah, that's your dream, but making it a reality is tough. I mean, it is really tough. I'm glad that I get to experience it with him, though. It's special. One win away from a state title. How does that compare with what your goals were to start the season? I'll be honest, our very first meeting that we had, we, we wrote just simple things on the board, Northwest Conference. We didn't get that done. We got beat by a very good Spencerville team at Spencerville. First game of the league, so you know, strike that off right off the bat. But we put sectional title, district title, regional title, state title. That was our goal. We had a great summer. We had a lot of guys coming back. So. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. We, our goal was to get here and compete once we got here. Knew it was going to be tough because of who we are going to have to beat to get here, but it, it was a goal from the get-go. Will the state title make up for the NWC loss? Uh, I'll definitely trade that in the <laughs> Coach, you talk about striving for our excellence, and you talk about setting the foundation for the younger generation of this team. You know, like you said, 
competing for a state trophy. You guys have the backing of the, the entire Crestview community. So just overall, like, how do you feel like this is going to set the foundation? I think it's special that our young guys get to be a part of this. We have five JB guys that are practicing still with us every single day, being a scout team, and they spend all week being Berlin Highland and getting us ready, and they get to come and experience this. So these guys set the foundation. We followed the, the 2019 class. You look up to those kids. You know, these kids were in junior high when the last time we won it. So striving for excellence, I'll be honest, is it's one of our school mottos and, and academics and athletics. And we got a great community with great support. We have great parents, great administration, teachers, and then our student body. They support us, they back us, and then obviously it takes a special group of athletes to get here and we have a, a really good group this year. Talking a little bit further about that group, you know, one of the things that your players talked to me about was it's um, it's we, not me. So it's a team effort. And for you to see like them sharing the ball with one another, just that team chemistry coming alive in the second half, you know, how's that going to help in the momentum on, on Sunday? It's big for us. You look at our stats and we're not going to wow anybody. I think our leading score average is about 10 and a half points a game. If you look at our stat sheet, almost across our top four shooters, the same number of shot attempts. Obviously, we have plays for, for certain people to get shots, but it, it's spread out. It's game to game, depending on how people are shooting the basketball for us and how the defense is, is attracting help and, and what's going on on that side of the ball. But the special thing about this group is, and it's on the back of our shirts, and to get a, a group of individuals to buy into that. And it's, it's a team sport, but we live in a selfish society where me is important. And these guys have left the me out of it. and. Like tonight, we're going to celebrate. Mitch did a great job. Ren did a great job. And our guys are going to be happy for these guys. And that's what it's taken from this group. We've got seven seniors. They've all bought into their role. We've got some underclassmen that came up and provided great help off the bench for us. But we got a, a special group of individuals that don't care who gets the credit as long as we get the win. All right, comments from head coach Doug Etzler along with Mitch Temple and Ren Sheets. Uh, you know, they came out as a completely different team from the first half to the second half. And they just, you know, you mentioned some nerves. I think there was just a lot of opportunities for Doug to calm things down. And they came out and they looked like a team that we've watched all season. They really did. You know, what happened there in the opening game, they turned the ball over three times their first three possessions in the first quarter. Then they turned it over the first two possessions in the second quarter. And I felt watching them warm up, they just weren't, they weren't the same team that I saw a week ago, and I thought maybe there's some nerves involved, but you are correct. They came out, they did not turn the ball over at all in quarter number three and just exploded. There's a significant difference between the amount of shots taken by both teams. Highland had taken 28 shots in the first half to Crestview's 18, and that was, and even with all that, Crestview and uh, Highland were still very close, and then Crestview just was able to, you know, we mentioned earlier, able to take very few uh, possessions and turn into a lot of points. Well, they really, they were very efficient, didn't turn the ball over, got a good shot every time. They made two three-point field goals. They had two and one opportunities in there, and they played extremely well in that third quarter. So with the win, Crestview moves on to the Division IV state championship, and they'll take on the winner of Rushi and Richmond Heights. Of course, everyone is pretty much assuming it's going to be Richmond Heights. Richmond Heights unbeaten this season. They've won 47 games in a row. Uh, Rushi has had a tremendous season as well, but everyone's kind of feeling it's Richmond Heights. But... You never know until you play the games, but Crestview, in any case, uh, they do get to move on and a chance at their first state title since only 2019. <laughs> well, you know what? Congratulations to them. Everybody wants to play on Sunday. They're not going to play on Sunday. Now, who are they going to play? Richmond Heights would be the favorite, but when you get a chance to go on the court and play for 32 minutes, I'll take those odds any day. That's going to wrap up our coverage of this division semifinal, Division Four state semifinal. Crestview with the victory, 69-63 to over Highland. Thank you to Vanward Vision for sponsoring our coverage. We will be back later on with coverage of Rushi and Richmond Heights. And then tomorrow we'll have coverage of Ottawa Glandorf and their rematch against Columbus Afrocentric. And then we will have highlights of Crestview's state championship game with analysis of that one on Sunday. Thank you so much to Zach Keith, Ryan Shadowall for helping us out. For Mark Shine, I'm Patrick Hamler. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you later when we talk about Rushi and Richmond Heights here on WOSN. Goodbye.